Great. Um, thank you all so much for joining. Um, it's both wonderful and somewhat daunting to have so many people um, on the online chat, not all of whom I can even see. Uh, so um, it's a great pleasure to be here. And thank you so much to Pagliacci Rossi and Mayday Rooms for putting together both this in-person archive, this physical archive, and their digital archive, um, which if you haven't visited is becoming quite incredible. Um, and I think Dante and Matthew will send out the links for that. Um, I uh, have um, a few slides I can show by way of introduction. Um, I did not prepare a formal talk as I thought um, it didn't make sense for me to give um, a strict historical overview um, because we have Leopoldina here to ask in person. And I know many of you have worked on these and related histories and are probably eager to um, both offer your own thoughts and join in the conversation with her. So um, I have a number of slides. I have a lot I, I could say, but please just um, turn me off after um, you know about 20, 20 minutes or so. So we save time for Leopoldina's presentation and uh, a conversation afterwards. Um, I think that much of what I have to say uh, will be familiar to a lot of you, but I did want to give something of a bit of a grand framing, just to, even in a cursory manner um, of the archive and um, maybe just talk about what some of its questions, provocations, critical reception, you know, might, might be for us um, today. So I guess I will just share my screen now. Um, and, you know, please do uh, cut, cut me off or maybe Matthew and Dante, if you can wave at me somehow, <laughs> message me to shut the fuck up in private chat um, if it gets to be too long. Okay, um, it looks like there's still some folks joining, but I'm going to share my screen and just we can take a look at the little PowerPoint um, I prepared. Oops. Hey, okay. um, can everyone see that? That's looking okay. I guess I could view full screen. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. I'll just do that so I can um, jump between. Um, so, so hopefully you all uh, had some chance to look over, to skim at least, um, these anthologies of, of translations um, that I've been working on, and hopefully we'll soon be working on with um, other editorial support contribution um, from more excellent Italian speakers and scholars who, who will inform them. So they're fairly crude at the moment, but I think I made that disclaimer. Um, kind of painfully clear in the little introduction I, I sent, so I won't um, rehash that here today. Um, I was very fortunate, though, just to be clear, to spend many months in, in Padova um, and very generously hosted by Maria Rosa and her partner Dario. And the so staff of the Biblioteca Civica um, allowed a kind of um, unfettered access to, to, to scan as much of the collection as I could. Was very fortunate to get out of there just as the Northeast went into a really intensive COVID um, lockdown. Um, but, you know, one, as I say in the little introductory blurb, one of the few uh, pleasures of, of this period of intensive quarantine and the, the you know, the, the rolling back of archival access and good capacities to travel is just been sharing the documents with a lot of folks and seeing, you know, a, a whole network of people who really work on the material, a whole network of folks who were who were doing new scholarship. Um, research related to its legacies. So I, I hopefully some of those folks are here can join in the conversation um, later. So here's, here's my very brief and um, kind of grandiose uh, framing. So there is, of course, I don't think I need to give a um, strict history of the movement. You can certainly find that in Louise Tupin's book. Um, and in many other, the work of many other scholars who've contributed to, to documenting it. 
um, there are certain foundational texts and certain foundational moments that we can point to in terms of the development of Lata Feminista. And, you know, one is given um, often of these meetings in Padova in 1971-72 of women with uh, experience of developing feminist movements in, in five countries, including the US, the UK, Great Britain, I'm sorry, Great Britain and the UK, a US, UK, um, Italy, Germany, France, um, a re remarkable group of activist scholars who came together and kind of contributed to the formulation and brought, you know, varying perspectives, varying traditions. Um, here are a few of what we might call the quote unquote foundational texts, the statement of the International Feminist Collective, um, the uh, first edition of Potere Femminile e Sovrazione Sociale, um, published as Power of Women and Subversion of the Community in collaboration with James, um, a, a, a transcript fragment from a speech that's, uh, that Selma James gave at one of the early meetings, which is remarkable in that it, it, it sort of gives some accounting and history of a, of a lesbian feminist and separatist perspective as it's developing and uh, the, the way the movements develop, have developed in Great Britain and US at the time to inform the Italian organizing. I mean, so you really do get um, this um, kind of incredible constellation of folks with, with experience of different histories, different uh, activist and scholarly work, you know, including, um, including Silvia Federici, Maria Rosa della Costa, uh, Birgit Gautier, uh, uh, Giovanna Franca della Costa, and others, right? Um, so this statement of the International Feminist Collective uh, that they author is, is often pointed to as a kind of foundational text. Um, but of course, the problem of foundations is a really interesting one and, a, and, a, and a always a fascinatingly problematic and rich one when it comes to social movements. Uh, you know, the, the way they negotiate their status um, as a, a kind of uh, creation ex nihilo, a, a foundation of a whole new politics and subject of history versus, you know, their, their kind of translation between legacies of struggle that have preceded them, informed them that they can test, et cetera, right? Um, and I actually think that Leopoldina Fortunati's work is, is uh, one of the most important um, uh, in addressing this particular question, this question of origins or a feminist sort of theory of history. Um, there's a, a wonderful text of hers that, I didn't send a translation, but I'm working on called Donna e Memoria Storica, Women and Historical Memory, um, you know, which talks about the difference between those cases in which a movement needs to declare um, a fundamental break, right, and found a sort of a new revolutionary subject, quote unquote, and, you know, when it needs to have, to have access to recourse to um, history. Uh, in, in, in part, it's a, it's a fascinating engagement with and critique of Negri, you know, she's saying, well, it's fine, you know, if Spinoza is this savage anomaly that jumps over history, but still as feminists, we need to negotiate the relation to our history, to our future, to our past, right? Um, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> I would say that these foundational, you know, part of what's so interesting about the archive, one of the amazing things about the archive, is you get all of these uh, investigations, reinvestments in a kind of feminist historiography, very intensive research projects that develop um, at the University of Padova. Um, these are just a couple of examples of them here. Quaderni di ricerca, the research um, drafts that would be circulated um, amongst women, you know, developing sort of theories of um, the, the, the how, you know, how we got to be here at a point where a feminist movement is, is inevitable, necessary, and um, that we will now develop the structure for. Um, the one on the right here is this amazing history that Leopoldina wrote um, that you know goes back to Neolithic times. I think this is an early grand history project, sort of in the vein of Engels, you know, history of family, private property, and the state. And she never, you know, fully continued it, but you could certainly ask her about it. There, uh, a similar uh, in the same series, one from Giovanna Franca della Costa, who writes about the evolution of family form, right? So this is just to say that this is a part of a process. Um, uh, essential to the formation of the movement is this sort of great 
intellectual history, a sort of Marxian feminist analysis of shifting modes of production. Um, Federici says in the introduction to Caliban and the Witch, right, that every social movement has to sort of negotiate this problem, you know, give the history of its, uh, of its formation, of, of the subjects that it wants to destroy and invent, right? Um, and there's a certain there's a certain truth to that, perhaps, or at least it does seem to be characteristic of, of movements, um, post-war social movements, um, very broadly. Um, and and a lot of this, I should say, you know, a lot of this research and question of foundations becomes the basis, of course, for the Grande Calibano, which is uh, a, Leopold is Polda's collaboration uh, with Federici that becomes something of the basis for Calibano the, and the Witch, uh, additionally. But um, I think the, the question of um, the question of foundation and, and what sort of new revolutionary subject you, you want to form, right, becomes an extraordinarily complex one in Leopoldino's work. And that's part of why I, I, I gave you all um, the notes on power and organization within Lotto Feminista, which is actually a text that I believe, Polda, you had a great hand in authoring. Um, but we can we can talk about that, or Polda should should speak to that. Um, but as she's developing the theory of of, of reproductive of reproductive labor, right in La Cano della Riproduzione, which is sort of drafted and redrafted throughout um, the '70s, and very much a product of the movement, um, you know, uh, finally published in the '80s and translated into English by Autonomia Media in the in '95, um, published by Autonomia Media in '95. Um, uh, she develops this incredibly complex, right, theory of reproductive labor, um, a, a, in which um, there is a, a certain kind of split that develops, I think. She says, um, the laws that govern production and reproduction are quite different, if not opposed. Reproduction appears as production's mirror image. It's photographic negative. Here you see the cover, the original cover for La Carne della Riproduzione, um, which had tarot cards on the on the cover, right? Uh, the the um, cards of the major arcana, which are these very powerful cards that can suddenly reverse in meaning. And there's all sorts of beautiful wordplay in the text. I, I, I'm working with Sarah Colantano, um, a colleague at, at Brown in the Italian Studies Department on a translation of this text right now. And if there's anyone here who's worked on the translations into Spanish um, or, uh, uh, or Korean recently, um, you'll know, you know what a complex and beautiful text it is, um, but how it does um, trade in all these Im images of negation reversal um, that are really quite fascinating to sort of describe um, the relation of reproductive labor to, to value, to value production. Um, I'm not gonna go into too much detail uh, on these, you know, I'm, I'm doing the obnoxious academic thing of giving you a giant block of text, which you'll never be able to read, you know, in, in, in the short time that it's on the screen. <laughs> Sorry, I, it's, a, it's an unconscious bad habit. Um, but this is uh, a beautiful passage where she talks about the co-presence of value and non-value within each individual, right? And the complexities of the way, you know, this is a split inside each subject, but then there are different positions within the distribution of labor as it's currently composed that variously mediate that split, right? Um, between the mother, the child, the waged worker, the folks in the neighborhood, the elderly student movements, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, so you really get this remarkable development of a language of mediation, of a language of inversion, reversal, sort of negative dialectics um, developed, you know, within this movement text. Um, that is really worthy of a more fine-grained analysis than we could give it here, but I did want to just, just point to it um, for, for discussion. Um, and you also might remember, um, you know, I, I talk some about the uh, anti-colonial movements in the little introduction I sent, which of course are quite essential to the groups thinking around the biopolitics of abortion, population control, 
Um, but you have to remember at this at this point in the Veneto region and in Italy more broadly, um, you know, throughout the 60s and early 70s, you know, there is an explosive embrace, right, of anti-colonial movements globally, and that just forms a, a very basic uh, context in which the movement emerges. Um, you know, leafing. Uh, well, I mean, just just think of you know the opening lines to. Um, to Laura del Fucile, uh, you know, Passi's anthem of um, Lotta Continua, right? Tutto il mondo sta esplodendo dall'Angola alla Palestina, l'America Latina sta combattendo la lotta armata vince in Indochina. I mean, you know, from Angola to Palestine, the struggle, you know, the world explodes, um, armed struggle takes off in Latin America. Um, uh, you know, and the and the pieces will fall with the violence of justice, right? A uh, very, very grand, um, grand sort of celebration of global revolution, third worldism. I mean, lots of continuous publishing all the material from the Panthers. Um, there is, you know, a real. Uh, and 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 in in relation to this, lot of feminista particularly becomes interested in women's struggle. Uh, particularly welfare rights struggle in the United States. You know, Piven and Cloward, Movimenti di Poveri is translated very early. I saw it in Rosa's study. I mean, it's still like on her desk. You know, and materials from the welfare rights movements, materials from black power, particularly in the Detroit um, area are very influential. Um, uh, Nicola Pito, uh, Pitolato, am I saying his name correct, has done really interesting work on this as well as a number of other folks. Um, so just, you know, in terms of general context, right? Um, but, but then in, in terms of also the work of Potera Parayo, um, there is a sort of direct confrontation with the division, of course, between intellectual and manual labor, um, even preceding, you know, the reception and uh, translation of, of Son Rafael. Um, you know, the, the notion that the primary social division of the capitalist division of labor, which you are going to confront, and you know, reconfigure is that between intellectual and manual labor, um, operai studenti unita um, uniti si vince, right? Um, so I, I just wanted to you know put you in mind, but of course, when 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 Leopoldina and others in the group were formulating, um, you know, the, the, their theories of reproductive labor of um, political organization. Um, they very much, uh, you know, come in this context of both uh, celebration, maybe you could even say glorification of third worldist and anti-colonial struggle, not always, you know, not always the most like serious and generous engagement or, uh, but, 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 but very much that, you know, the texts are read and known and celebrated, right? Um, and the break, the, the uh, Potera Parayo's, you know, thinking around the divisions of uh, intellectual and manual labor and how to intervene in them. Okay, so I should just jump forward. Um, and then you get, you know, the drafts, uh, you, you know, you get Leopoldina working um, intensively on this draft document about power and organization in Lotta Feminista, um, you know, really developing theories of um, how, if, one needs to formulate um, a revolutionary subject um, around the figure of reproduction, right around the housewife, the sort of negative identification with housework as a uh, mobile rubric through which to think about the ways in which reproduction subtends value production, enables it, creates it, whatever term you might want to use. Uh, um, so I just wanted to mention uh, the, that context, and and I think um, part of what becomes a really fascinating and still provocative debate in the in the movement text is what, if any, a sort of revolutionary subject needs to be formulated. Um, hopefully, you were able to read some of that fantastic text, um, Mille Fiori. Uh, their their critique engagement with um, yeah, uh, uh, the the extra parliamentary left circa seventy seven and the new groups of autonom autonomia and their critique of their formulation of a revolutionary subject. These are just some of the kind of cartoons around that. The wonderful one of the woman you know doing the housework for the revolution. Um, this jeez, uh, I should make these larger, shouldn't I? I don't. I, Maybe I should open a different view. 
Um, this is the uh, critique of autonomous groups um, as Indians in the piazza, cowboys in the bedroom, and sheriffs in the assembly. It's a it's a very caustic joke about um, Indiani metropolitani. Um, we can talk more about these if if there's interest. Um, but but one of the you know fascinating representational techniques, of course, that they develop and theorize and, and formulate in, in performances, street actions, music, right? Um, is is you know defining the subject um, of woman as this uh, sort of negative position within the division of labor um, that that can be organized uh, around you know whether or not it's ever a strict self same identity category of course it's an open question uh, <clears throat> one for debate I mean they make these wonderful cartoons about the sort of disappearance of self in labor. Uh, in, 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 in forced, forced maternity, in, in housework, um, sex work, etc. These are pro, uh, images from protests um, in circa 1974, I believe, for abortion, where they would just wear these, these wearing these placards um, declaring, you know, the, 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 the housework, forms of housework, making love, cooking. What's that say? Oh, scopare, oh, fucking. Um, but you, you, you get the idea. Um, and hopefully you looked at some of those closely in the readings that were distributed. And of course there's Grupo Imagine, which um, it, you know, affiliates with the musical group and you know, develops these wonderful techniques of um, sort of mimetic uh, relation to the current political um, structures and debates. Um, I mean, my Mises, you, you could even use it kind of in the Auerbach sense, in the sense that there's a, there's a refusal or breakdown of traditional genre, right? Um, so they make these fascinating performances, say, where uh, this is one, L'identita, um, where they make cutouts of the different positions on the parliamentary and extra parliamentary left and recite texts um, of their musings about on women, on the woman question from behind them, you know, <clears throat> and these are complemented with musical productions, which really double in some ways parody and critique um, the, uh, the, the, the productions, the, um, the aesthetic and theoretical productions of existing groups of the extra parliamentary left. Here's a famous example, Statue Padrone, um, you know, the Statue Padrone Fate Attenzione, the Anthem of Potera Paraio, <clears throat> which they rewrite, the musical group rewrites um, as a demand um, for, uh, for a refusal and compensation of, of, of reproductive work, of housework. Um, there are a few more qu uh, quick images here. I mean, I think there's some that didn't go in the, um, in the mail outs, but are really quite wonderful. I mean, here's one from uh, an issue of La Paraya de la Casa that Polda actually edited, or at least she is uh, listed as directrice responsabile uh, from 1967. Uh, a good one for, um, you know, those of you working on feminist theories of craft, where the, the, the woman on one side caught in the sort of net of exploitation and the distribution of labor, you know, the liberation is just the absence or tear in the social fabric. I mean, some of them are really quite beautiful. I, I know Jacopo, I think, has a whole chapter on them in his in his coming book, um, Grupo Imagine and such, and I, I believe other folks have been working on that history. Um, how am I doing on time? I can't see a time on my thing here and I really don't want to take up too much time. Well, maybe if you want to carry on till another 15 minutes or so. Oh, okay, good, good, good. Right. 15, 20, whatever, that's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's perfect. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I wanted to sort of just point to that representational strategy, that strategy of mimetic doubling and parody, um, <clears throat> which they, which sort of comes part and parcel with a um, very elaborate formulation, you know, it, it, in a sense using or almost a detournement, grand detournement of the language of a left Hegelian Marxist discourse, right, that you find in the arcane of reproduction. Um, so I, I just wanted to point to some of those strategies and issues um, 
we we have a lot on the abortion um, protests that we could um, certainly discuss. Um, and I think part of what is most remarkable, right, about the, about these um, texts on abortion, is that um, you know the 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 refusal of um, uh, uh, of the role of, a, of forced maternity co or coerced maternity, right? As it's formulated in the abortion campaigns, you know, it just, it never just comes as a negative liberty, right? As just a freedom from, um, from forced or coerced uh, maternity. You know, it comes with an attendant analysis, biopolitical analysis of the development of global capitalism, population control, uh, divisions of labor uh, between nations, right? It comes, I mean, there's a deep awareness of, say, forced sterilization that's sponsored by the Rockefeller Foundation in Puerto Rico and California that becomes, you know, adapted, admired and adapted in Nazi Germany that, um, you know, becomes a precedence also for this, the fascist era laws against abortion um, that they are still living uh, under the, um, the, the Rocco codes, Alfredo Rocco, um, having been Mussolini's uh, justice minister um, and, and the code being that which defines abortion as a crime against the lineage, against the race, against the state, very tied to, you know, the, the formation of a, uh, of an ethno-nationalist Italian capitalist identity, you know, which, which, you know, in, in the, I guess, in relation to other, the uh, terrible colonial powers develops late, right? Develops not until um, really the second, well, no, there's a lot of precedents in late 19th century, but, but uh, you know, develops late uh, in, the, in the grand scheme of things. Um, let's see, sorry, I got uh, vaguely distracted there. But so I did want to point to that fact that the abortion discourse that they develop, the texts, the performances, you know, they never just ask for freedom from the coercion of, uh, uh, of forced motherhood. Um, they, they are always deeply delving into this history and they're always laying claims for, you know, a radical kind of seizure and reconfiguration of the means of reproduction, you know, on a local and international level, right? Which you really saw if you read a text like um, Programmatic Manifesto of Housewives in the Neighborhood, right? Which is a fascinating text, which dates to early on in debates within Lotta Feminista, while there's still disagreement, um, you know, about the wages for housework as a slogan, you know, as a, as a rallying cry, as a um, provocation, you know, and how that will be read and interpreted, which are of course debates that, that, that run throughout the movement and even today. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it very much does show a, um, you know, concerted and uh, comprehensive, amazing sort of planning, right? Um, for this kind of seizure um, of a, a, you know, a more, more positive liberty to develop a healthcare system, to develop, you know, an infrastructure of care that is um, uh, not um, punitive or not aligned with the interests of a global capitalist development that is not aligned with any of the theological or political edicts, right? I mean, part of what makes the, you know, the situation in Italy really interesting and perhaps somewhat difficult to make, draw any facile analogies between today and, um, you know, today and, uh, and, and, and their context um, is just the, the, the real complexities of all of the different political actors and the political constellation. I mean, you had a, a communist party, right, that in some ways was as rigid uh, in its enforcement, at least, you know, in some of the earlier years uh, before a real sort of feminist contingent strongly intervenes in its own organizational structures, but really, really fiercely enforcing, 
you know, work family discipline in a way that at times is as extreme or more extreme than the Christian Democrats or Catholic Church, right? Because they, you know, and you see this in, of course, the introduction to Polda's essay, which hopefully you got a chance to read, those wonderful communist flyers from the factory gates, right? Which describe the need for factory family discipline, you know, acting in concert and collaboration to uh, properly reproduce the revolution. Um, so yeah, there's, there's of course a lot here to um, talk about more around abortion. Um, I just wanted to jump, is there anything I wanted to jump to? Um, I think when we talk about the sort of divisions or, or factionalism between groups, it's also really interesting to keep in mind what an, just what an ecology, what an ecosystem, um, you know, the, the, the left was particularly in the Veneto region, you know, it seems that they all, you know, people joined multiple groups, they still collaborated on things even after the breaks, you know, the Busata sisters, I think, and Maria Rosa, the group one and group two of Lotta Feminista still collaborate. Um, Sylvia told me a very funny story about this, uh, this issue, the Thousand Withered Flowers, um, she said that even though it's the harshest of critiques um, of these of the Red Brigades, uh, Nuclear Mati Proletari, uh, of um, Atraverso, of some of the autonomist groups, um, she said that women in the Red Brigades actually used it like for a reading group and then, you know, got back with them for discussions. So, I, I mean, I think membership is probably much more fluid than it might seem from a distance and, you know, collaboration, like antagonistic collaboration is much more the norm. Um, but folks here who really have delved into the Veneto archives should speak to that. Um, I think uh, Anna's here. She, I'm sure she knows this, that history better than I do. Um, but I, uh, the, the, finally, I just wanted to sort of put you in mind of some of um, Leopoldina's great later works uh, as they developed a sort of uh, feminist theories of technology. Um, this is uh, a, a, just a quote from, I think, an interview with Steve Wright about the cyclo stile and the megaphone. I mean, Leopoldina has gone on to write about everything from the Roomba to Siri to um, a, a other, other home robots, I believe. And, and we can elaborate on some of those, um, in some of her later work in conversation. Um, but I think the, the feminist, the sort of theory of technology that develops and the relation of both like participation in um, and critique of a capitalist, you know, apparatus of technological development is really a deeply fascinating one in these texts. Um, you'll, you may have noticed there's a, there's a sharp and sort of harsh critique of discourses um, on consumerism, right, as they exist in the new left and uh, context of the time and, and sociological literature of the time, right? Um, you know, they, there's a line in Mille Fiori where they, they write something like, um, you know, the critique of consumerism is nothing but the same, you know, petty, petty bourgeois dribble we hear from Galbraith to Marcuse. Um, you know, it does not appreciate, uh, you know, use of technology uh, as a kind of proletarian resistance, etc. Um, and, and I think that gets very interesting, particularly as applied to the, you know, the questions of abortion. You'll have noticed that magnificent line in um, Maternita Aborto, Aborto uh, where they write, it's something like, um, you know, the, the, the development of contraceptive technologies is about as, you know, about as remarkable as the, the marketing for the latest American, you know, tech device for your kitchen. You know, it, it's something that's presented as the latest and greatest of technological development, uh, but, you know, it's not really worthy of the uh, dawn of time. You know, uh, the, the auto hot dog griller or the microwave, or the, et cetera, right? There's this interesting, um, you know, commentary on the irrationality of technological development that, you know, in some, there's a long tradition of this in Aparismo, at least going back to Pansieri and his famous critique 
of the ways in which a traditional Marxian historiography had sort of uh, taken uh, the apparent good of technological development uh, as a, you know, at face value, right? Um, so, but, but of course it's filtered through, you know, a feminist critique of um, the production reproduction division, right? Which is part of what makes it really fascinating. And I think, you know, interestingly pertinent, um, you know, there's also, but there's also a great love for uh, the use and misuse of technologies, right? It's not a technophobic line at all, I think, particularly in Leopoldina's later work, right? Um, so I would just uh, probably leave it there. Oh, we could talk about, you know, the, the influence of Tronti and the critique of Tronti, which is really interesting also when you get to Tronti's theory of um, the media apparatus as almost architectural infrastructure for the party form, right? Um, but, and, and the ways in which, you know, a lot of the feminist work claims to, you know, out Tronti Tronti in terms of the Copernican revolution, right? Leopoldina uh, will, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, no, I want to say Maria Rosa, uh, you know, you know will, will, will say that she is, um, you know, performing a kind of Trontian displacement uh, where reproductive labor is, is centered, right? Um, Leopoldina has a penultimate chapter in the Arcano um, on the notion of what it would mean uh, to have a worker's history of reproduction, right? Which is, which is uh, a, a kind of um, detourment or engagement with uh, the uh, Trontian call, I think, right, for the workers' newspaper, the famous call in Lenin in England um, for, for the newspaper as a structuring form. Um, but a lot of that gets very interesting when we, um, when we get to talking about maybe some of Polda's later work or her reflections on um, political situation and technologies today. So I think I'll probably just leave it there Oh, this is a very funny cartoon from Wages to Lesbians, Toronto. Um, a good, good critique of technology. I threw that in. Um, but yeah, I, I am very excited to um, hear from you all and well, to hear from Polda and, and then have a broader conversation. I can always go back to any of these documents as need be. Fantastic. Uh, thanks very much, Arlen. Um, so, yeah, we'll pass on to Leopoldina now, and then we can um, afterwards have discussion from people on the Zoom and also those of us who are in here in person. But uh, I need uh, to pick up uh, the presentation, my presentation today. Um, I think, Arlen, if you stop the screen. Oh, I'm sorry. Do I need to stop screen sharing? Yeah. Uh, how can, uh, can you? Gotcha. Oh, yeah, I did. I believe I just did. Thank you. Okay. I selected uh, some points that uh, political points uh, connected to the debate uh, of that of those time times uh, but uh, uh, of course uh, if you need if you want uh, if you like uh, to uh, deal with other points uh, you interrupt me and uh, uh, I will change uh, or uh, we choose other uh, uh, points. Um, I prepare some reflection about uh, uh, the struggle uh, we did about abortion, motherhood, and uh, the reappropriation of own body, the struggle about sexuality, the struggle about race, uh, the struggles, uh, how the, all these struggles were connected uh, to the wage uh, for and against uh, housework, the theme of consumption as field of struggle, uh, technology as uh, the terrain of a new coloni colonization of the reproduction sphere. And here uh, it, uh, we, we should uh, uh, 
dedicate uh, a seminar only to technology because uh, um, uh, the reflection and the analysis of Pantieri, of Tronti, etc., are referring to a world which uh, is completely changed because the machine at that time and their reflection was connected to uh, industry, to the production uh, uh, and um, work in the factories. Now, uh, this uh, situation is completely changed. We have the houses in which tech advanced technologies uh, work are functioning nowadays. And this create a completely different situation. And then uh, um, the, some reflection on the fact that uh, we are going backward everywhere, US, Italy, uh, about women. Um, uh, and then, uh, they, but uh, they will not have, we will not have time to also talk about the, uh, what I think it is a war on women that is now, now, now going on, which is much more wide than the Russian-Ukraine uh, uh, war. Um, we start from the first point, the struggle about abortion. We started uh, transforming uh, uh, an abortion trial with, of course, uh, the um, the, the, the will of uh, the um, uh, Francesca Pierobon, uh, the, the woman implicated in this uh, trial, um, we transformed this into a political trial by women against this uh, uh, punitive uh, state policy against women. So it, we completely reinverse the problem. She was uh, uh, the, 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 the real, uh, the, the, the colpevole, I don't know <laughs> in English, somebody can help me, the real, um, uh, uh, the person that, the, 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 the entity that should add, uh, be, um, be in, in the trial should have been the state. You're yeah, about the, the yeah. state, not the woman process. Really? So uh, the, the, um, the fight uh, over abortion for us was part of the, a political program regarding motherhood in, in uh, uh, overall, which was articulated uh, uh, in, uh, in, the, in the will we express uh, to have all the children we wanted when we wanted and if we wanted. This is a very important uh, uh, to say because you know uh, the, the, the punishment of women with uh, regarding the abortion was one of the various areas, political areas in which women were attacked. For example, the number of uh, uh, children. There is a kind of social construction of what is uh, the right number of children for a couple, for a woman to have nowadays. No? At maximum one, at maximum two. Uh, the, the women that uh, um, that uh, do uh, five or six children are, are seen socially as a disturbing person no? because they, they, are, they do not produce the right number of children. And so you can do only the children that this economic system allow you to raise. So if you produce too many children, uh, you know, you are mm, dissonant uh, to the system. So also when we wanted, because at that time, uh, women had to, uh, to uh, do children 
uh, at a certain age, very, very young. Um, the, uh, women who produce children at a more mature age were considered, you know, something not, not, uh, not right. And then if you wanted to have children, we didn't, uh, uh, and this is also the question of the abortion, but it was not only the question of the abortion, it was also the question to a uh, demystification of the image of a woman that necessarily was seen as a mother. So was very, um, spread this in, in society, this notion that the, you are a real woman only if you are also a mother. Huh? You realize yourself as woman only through motherhood. Women who do not have children were, you know, considered some something like uh, um, uh, uh, um, a person that uh, uh, did not uh, um, uh, exploit all the possibility uh, that uh, they can have. And so also uh, was seen as something also, uh, so some, somebody socially also a little bit disturbing. So th there was all a, a rhetoric, a social rhetoric, a cultural rhetoric uh, around, uh, around uh, women and motherhood that uh, was, uh, we need to deconstruct around uh, the, 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 this question of motherhood, the abortion, et cetera. And also um, it was, a, in, in, and of course, uh, at the basis of all these was not only the abortion as a civic right, but it was the money. How can you uh, uh, raise children if you don't have the money to do so? So these uh, civil, uh, civic uh, civil rights uh, are uh, really uh, so as as are uh, really functioning if there is uh, an economic base uh, to that uh, allows uh, people uh, and the women in particular to realize uh, what they 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 want. And also it was connected to a very, uh, a very important point, which was the reappropriation of our body. So the long struggle, uh, so the, all the, the groups uh, now that uh, uh, who flourished around the world um, about that, uh, the, on the reappropriation of the body and of, um, trying to um, help women to recognize their body, to see their body, to become aware that their body was uh, uh, belonging to them. No? Uh, in, and uh, uh, to learn some uh, uh, medical concepts no? in order to be capable to manage our body in a certain way. These, uh, it is the longest struggle against the medicalization of all the processes and events connected to women's body. And I must say that in these years, unfortunately, this process of medicalization of the process that uh, are connected to women's body have developed enormously everywhere. The, the other point was the struggle about sexuality. Even here, our discourse was very complex. Um, we wanted to gain freedom on sexuality. 
So the right to express uh, um, express ourselves on our sexuality, the orgasm also for women, the discover that also women have the right to uh, have their orgasm and, uh, you know, which was not uh, a, a right uh, recognized uh, widely to women. But also, uh, from sexuality, so the freedom from sexuality, the social obligation to be sexually active, for example, and the use of sexuality by advertising companies. So there is a sexualization of society that uh, develops against women uh, just for productive, uh, to make money, okay? Because uh, selling uh, uh, erotic uh, and um, sexual uh, uh, things um, or images or symbols, etc., or discourses uh, allow uh, people to make a lot of money. But this, uh, again, distorts, you know, uh, distorts the real power of women and of every individual because this continues, uh, uh, you know, um, pressure on sexuality is uh, uh, really uh, something that uh, uh, is wrong in political terms. Uh, it's something that we need to refute. At the time uh, we politically recognized and support all the struggle over the social political legitimacy of various sexual behavior, homosexuality, et cetera, all the different kind of uh, uh, behavior that uh, people had. And uh, these communities were very left alone because uh, were really live, uh, um, left uh, politically not, uh, uh, you know, uh, surrounded by solidarity, by um, inclusion uh, in the movement, etc. Uh, the left was completely, also the, the, the radical left was not, uh, not, not, not um, uh, taking care of this feminist movement immediately taking care of this. And then the sex work, recognizing politically that the struggles of the prostitute were also our struggle. And that the prostitute is the other face of the housewife. And so we have the same interests, which, which are the, um, uh, the, the destruction of a system that, uh, you know, uh, manipulate uh, women one against the other. Um, uh, starting from what Arlen said, uh, the, the, um, uh, also the, the, um, our engagement, uh, uh, you know, uh, our attempt uh, to create uh, these international networks, uh, um, and uh, he described the various countries uh, in which we must also consider Switzerland because we, were, we had a lot of uh, connection also with uh, Switzerland and the women there. But I remember for two episodes <laughs> from this international engagement. One was uh, in Frankfurt when uh, our uh, um, German comrades uh, asked us to join them uh, because they were preparing an event in the Cathedral of Frankfurt uh, about the abortion. Now, and, uh, and so we went there to help them and it was a very uh, important event. Now, and it was important to be Mm, as many uh, we can, uh, you know, to also show that it was not only a German 
struggle, but it was a, an international struggle by all the women. So this was an, and another was uh, um, uh, the, the um, a presence that we had in Berlin at the University of Women uh, in which uh, it was at the beginning of the movement, but uh, um, uh, we, uh, with the Silvia, we uh, already studied a lot of history of women in the uh, um, uh, original uh, or the accumulation of capital. So uh, in the um, uh, in the medieval and then uh, uh, modern times. And uh, I remember that, that there was a, que a question um, about the prostitution and uh, a part of the movement that were not so uh, keen, uh, uh, you know, to not so likely to include also uh, prostitute struggle, uh, who are these prostitutes, who are different, uh, you know, we are, um, uh, <laughs> right women, and, uh, and uh, I, I said, uh, you are wrong. We are all, almost all children of prostitutes because this is what the history in Europe tell us. And if you, you know, if every one of us go in the archive, and uh, to see what was uh, their, the parents of their parents of their parents, uh, they find uh, anonymous uh, uh, children, anonymous uh, father and mother, et cetera, because uh, this was uh, the real uh, uh, situation. So it was uh, uh, really important for women to recognize this. Uh, the, uh, the third point uh, was the recognition, immediate recognition that the race was a strategy of women division and stratification, of class stratification inside uh, um, women. So we connected immediately with the representatives of the organization of black women recognizing the importance of the struggles, uh, of their struggles against uh, um, uh, this class stratification uh, for the overall feminist movement. And uh, uh, here, uh, you know, one of the limits of the, uh, uh, maybe of the American movement in the United States was uh, this, uh, um, was uh, to not uh, recognize immediately the necessity, the political uh, necessity to uh, connect uh, with the black women. And uh, in uh, Europe, this question is especially connected now to uh, migration, migrations and uh, the, the, the need to connect with them migrant women. The, four, uh, the fourth point, uh, uh, as I said, all these struggles uh, uh, against race, uh, about abortion and um, about, uh, I, I don't remember this, the other, no. I already finished my, my time, <laughs> so 20 minutes already passed. <laughs> oh, go, go on, Neopoldina, you don't have to stay to exactly yeah. 20 minutes, right? I mean, please. <laughs> uh, all these uh, struggles were connected uh, to the wage for against the housework uh, because without money, civil rights remain a formal, uh, um, a formal victories that uh, then uh, remain there. The, 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 and so this was really uh, in, um, very clear to us. Now, uh, civil rights are important, but insufficient if they, not, they are not connected 
with the, the struggle for wage for and against uh, uh, housework. Um, this, in fact, was the main, uh, the main uh, uh, aim of the campaign. The campaign was on the economic recognition of domestic care war work, you know? because only through this uh, we saw it, it only the money was the right lever to break the subordination, the subject, subjection of women on a social level. And it was uh, the only way to give to women uh, the power to become autonomous persons. At the point that already um, Arlen touched, the, the, the point of the uh, consumption. No? Um, consumption uh, is uh, completely changed. Uh, we have uh, the uh, critics of consumerism elaborated by Marcuse, for example. So the idea that the middle class in the capitalist world was engaged uh, in the consumerism as considered as, as a, uh, an irrational cage in which these uh, people and the, the women uh, of uh, middle class uh, they spend their good wages, their good wealth on uh, um, unuseful things that served to keep the capitalist economy running. Of course, this was true, but this vision was uh, had to be completely um, reformulated when, uh, you know, the wealth, the well-being enlarged a lot also to working class. And the, the critics of consumerism against working class was ridiculous. So uh, the, the, what uh, uh, we approached, the consumption as a field of struggle and proactive and creative political behavior by people. So uh, from a vision, of uh, uh, um, you know, uh, consumers as a dependent variable of the um, capitalist system, we uh, proposed another, a completely different vision. So a vision of the um, workers, women as independent variable in the consumption you know, because they have power of buy things, they have, have power of decide what they want. They have power through also now the internet, etc., to negotiate, to impose at, uh, uh, in a certain sense their will, their desire to industry about what they want as uh, uh, goods. And technology, uh, as I said, is the terrain of a new colonization of the reproduction sphere. The reproduction sphere is the place where um, the web giant, the, the, gi the five giants of the web, Apple, Microsoft, etc., make money, make, uh, they, they are at the top of the, the, the the value, the extraction of value uh, from people. But uh, where it is, where this extraction of value happens through technologies is in the house, not anymore only in the factory, but it is even more now in the houses because in the houses we have the great number of people. We have millions, billions of people who use technologies. So now it is, and they are not gadget, gad, small gadgets, etc. No, they are the fruit of advanced uh, innovation process, uh, like uh, 
the robotic products we had, Alexa, Roomba, uh, Bimbi, um, or mobile phones, or uh, computer internet. Uh, and uh, here uh, is uh, um, the penetration of these technologies in the um, reproduction sphere has uh, transformed also the extraction of, of surplus value there. The, now there is a double extraction in the domestic sphere of value. There is a, an extraction of value through the value of the, the, the labor force that is produced at home. And there is a direct extraction of value by all the member of families that, that uh, use this technology. The seven point that uh, I made is that we are going backward everywhere. US uh, um, a law about abortion, against abortion is terrible. But also Italy, now we, we have a, a good law, a good, a relatively uh, good law on ab abortion, but uh, this law is nullified by the fact that, that many doctors appeal to the right of conscience not to practice abortions in public facilities. These are a lot, uh, they, they, you know, um, uh, there is a, this uh, um, right of conscience for uh, uh, Catholic doctors that uh, uh, um, uh, they say that for them it is not possible to do that. They are not allowed. But uh, this uh, prohibition, uh, the, the position of Catholic law on abortion is relatively young until the um, uh, 19th century, the church didn't not uh, say anything about abortion in the theologically. It has been the Pope Pius IX that uh, in the, in the uh, encyclic uh, Castico Nubi said for the first time, that the abortion was uh, uh, a sin and was uh, prohibited. So, you know, it is a, it, it, this is also interesting. It is a, a recent theological construction and that uh, fuel, fuels a lot of, uh, uh, gives a lot of reason for this doctor to, in a reality, nullify the law uh, uh, on abortion in Italy. Uh, the, 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 this point uh, is that uh, in my vision now, uh, as I said before, there is a war on, me, on women. There are uh, two war, words that are politically and culturally opposed to controlling the body of women. They, the point is the control of women's body. Mm? And we have two different uh, world. A world that is uh, home to conservatives, neo-Nazis, neo-fascists, and right-wing movements on the array, which are raising all over the world. And they want to return to the idea of the domestic work as a natural work mission for women to the family as it was conceived, you know, men and um, mother and uh, child, ch a ch child or two children to the heterosexuality, the prohibition of abortion, a role of women uh, subordinate to that of the men. This is a one war. There is the patriarch, patriarch Cyril, 
there is a lot of people, uh, those who vote for Le Pen in France, th those who vote for League, the League in Italy, etc. A lot of the uh, Trumpists in the US and a world where we are, we are feminists, LGBTQ communities, left somehow, <laughs> some left, etc. And uh, these two worlds confront each other, uh, you know, and our world is uh, losing power and the other is uh, earning power. And our world is losing power because there is no, uh, there has been no struggle for um, also for a wage for half work because of the, 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 this world, uh, you know, uh, uh, people go there also because of economic reason, because they be, are becoming poorer. Uh, and uh, uh, women especially are uh, uh, deluded because they are, uh, are uh, they see that the uh, social policy towards them are inexistent. So we are very limited and nobody take care of their situation. So it is a, a, a very, no, basta, stop. So I, I did a manifesto during the COVID uh, in, order, in order to uh, remade starting this uh, uh, struggle, uh, uh, this struggle uh, for the wage for housework also, because uh, I, I was so irritated because all the, you know, um, there was a debate, a, po a political debate in which women were completely ignored. And uh, the only political men who talked about women during the COVID was the president of the Italian Republic who said that we thanks women, we must thank women. Which women? Doctors, nurses, etc. Those who work on the hospital and took care of uh, all the, 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 the people with health problems. No one, but uh, you know, women at home who did an enormous amount of work uh, with the, the children there, with, with the husband there. Uh, not having the possibility to go out for anything, etc. These when women were completely neglected, uh, for God. So, uh, but 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 uh, because of the COVID, um, uh, we were able to um, collect uh, many many signatures. But uh, the the idea to organize a strike, a women strike in Italy was not possible to be realized for organizational problem. I would uh, finish here. I don't know if uh, you would like to talk uh, of uh, some okay. Fantastic, thank you very much for speaking with us.